Hello Plums, this is Luna here, the host of Body Poetry Podcast. Relax, enjoy, let the words sink in, and let the thoughts arise. Hi loves, welcome to a new episode of Body Poetry Podcast. As usual, I love sharing some knowledge and thoughts that are based on my experiences of life and others' experiences that I get to know and explore. Before we dive into this episode, I'd just like to let you know that I'm traveling in Europe this summer and I will host a workshop in London next Sunday, June 16th, and in Amsterdam the weekend after. So on Friday and on Saturday. So it's June 21st and June 22nd. The workshop on Saturday is sold out, but... I'm actually uh, opening more spots and I'm going to have a bigger space so I can have more beautiful beings coming. I am sharing the details on Instagram so make sure you follow what's happening on there so you can see and I'm super excited to see you all and meet you all and hug you. So today we are talking about the mother wound. The mother wound is a notion that is used in psychology that has to do with emotional and psychological wounds that we can experience depending on the relationship with our mother and her relationship with her own mother. It is a very complex notion and it's a very personal notion that is rooted in the exchange of energy between a mother and her child. Recognizing and understanding this wound is a first crucial step towards healing and creating a healthy relationship with ourselves and others. First of all, there is a stigma around the mother archetype, right? As in, the image of the mother is perfect. She's seen as nurturing, radiant, tender. So there is already this picture anchored within us all and within our mothers. So becoming a mother can already cause frustration and anxiety because of this ideal, right? Or this perfect image. First, it's important to remember that what our mothers pass on to us also contains what their mothers and ancestors pass on to her. Uh, to them, rather. <laughs> so yes, there is a lot we carry. I am mentioning this because it is also for all of us to understand that there is no need to blame our mothers and this episode is not to blame them or anyone but to understand them, their story and ultimately our story and our patterns. I believe that we all carry our mother and father wounds. I will talk about the father wounds next week. But there are clear signs of whether you carry a deep mother wound or not. The mother wound usually stands out if someone, or if you're someone rather, who deals with a huge lack of confidence and self-worth. When you believe that you don't deserve certain things, when you never feel enough or you never feel like you're doing enough. The mother wound appears if you're struggling also with relationships of all kinds and if you sabotage yourself regularly or even have unhealthy obsessions or addictions. The impact that those have can result as um, you having a hard time building healthy relationships because of a fear of rejection or abandonment. It's also you dealing with a very negative self-image, constantly criticizing yourself, which impacts many aspects of your life. You don't dare expressing yourself, you ultimately judge others easily, or used to judge others easily, and it can also affect your work and your friendships. It can also result as you experiencing a difficult mental health as in unsolved trauma and emotional wounds that can turn into depression, chronic anxiety, and personality disorders. But so, where does all of this come from? 
as in why do we carry the mother wound? Let me clarify that there is no perfect mother and each of us human beings experience different and unique relationships with our mothers. Maybe you recognize your mother as someone who has toxic behaviors. Maybe you don't know your mother or your biological mother. Maybe you are only realizing now that this wound is something you've been carrying your whole life. So the mother wound, on top of the pressure of having to embody the role of a perfect mother according to society's standards, as I mentioned before, it also comes from a lack of security and safety, which is what creates feelings of rejection or abandonment as a child. So you need to understand that what your mother has been struggling with and lacking of is then passed on to you. So some may be aware of it, but most times they're not. In the newer generations, we are told to break the cycle, right? Um, and I have a strong feeling that we are all trying to do that as a collective. But in older generations, there was way less of way less understanding and modern consciousness, as I like to call it. For example, I'll share a little bit of my story, although the father wound is a bigger one for me. Um, it's rather my mother's story more than mine directly, but my mother basically had to grow up on her own and take care of herself on her own because her mother, so my grandmother, was absent her entire childhood. She was not really there. She was always taking care of other things, always working, always out, always never there, right? And so her alcoholic father left his kids, his three kids, and his wife uh, for another woman when my mom was around six or seven years old. She's the youngest, and she has eight years of difference with her siblings. So she was on her own at that moment because her sister and brother left the house. Her childhood was mostly her spending time on her own, but had to take care of the house while her mom was working or never home. She had to do groceries from the youngest age, like eight or nine, I think something like that. And she's basically had to make herself. I love my mom and I admire her with my whole heart. She is a strong woman. She became an inc an incredible woman on her own and survived two cancers. No wonder her body responded uh, signaling such illnesses, right? So cancers after having to prove herself her whole life. There is, of course, many layers. I'm not telling you right now um, many details, but there's definitely more than this. And I just don't want to dive too much into details right now. So the mother wound she carries is signaled as her not being confident enough and always look for validation, for a sense of security. And she's even tried to look for those aspects in men, including my father. But ultimately, when you're not aware, you end up dating men that have similar patterns as your father or you, you seek the love and validation you didn't have. Um, just so you know, we'll go a bit more in depth with this when talking about the father wounds and relationships in another episode. In the case of my mother... Her father wound is deeper, just like in my case. So her traits are not as toxic as some may have. I just want to also uh, clarify this. For example, I've definitely repeated the same patterns and have had a very complex relationship with myself, with my body. And I've always thought I needed to be restless, just like she always has been and her mom has been. So I've always seen them, the two of them, my mom and my grandmother, restless. Like they've always worked and done so many things. They basically became their own man, I would say, now that I'm thinking about it. Wait, how come this was not like something that I realized before? <laughs> um, I love this podcast. So as a child, 
I picture in my mother and my grandmother a strong, independent woman. And so unconsciously and consciously, I thought I needed to become just as strong and resilient. Um, so there's a fun fact, for example, my mom would never allow us, so my brother and I, or very rarely to skip days at school. If we were ill, she would be like, you're fine, you can do it. So literally once I had to exaggerate my illness, I'm not even kidding, and put my forehead on the heater so that my fever would go up and the temperature um, on the sort of tape I don't know if you had this too it's like a tape that shows your temperature um anyway and it was for her to believe me so I could stay home that day and again there's no blame it's just that the way I was educated because we're basically educated according to our parents unsolved trauma and stories but the way my mom my mom raised me has a lot to do with her own conditions values she had to build in life There's also something else that I've realized um, as I spend more and more um, quality time with her now that I'm, you know, older, is that she's really, she's been through, because she still is in this process of healing, and I think, I mean, her entire life, our entire life, we're just healing, we're healing our entire life, but there's also this big notion of unfairness, it's like everything she lived in her childhood she sees it and she lived it and experienced it as unfair so she's still like unfairness is very deeply rooted in her heart and in her body in the way she thinks and the way she behaves and and what she looks for in life um because she always had to you know do it on her own she's done everything on her own even when she she was six she was on her own she was divorced there's a lot of aspects that she had to deal with on her own whether it's like paperwork like divorce paperwork or like getting a a house on her own like this kind of things she's always been very She's a very resilient woman, that's what I would say. But she's always looked for, like, she was like, okay, I don't have, like, my life is unfair. I mean, what I'm, what I've, I mean, she hasn't said that, like, literally, but I can sense in her body and with the childhood that she had, she's looking for this, she's not looking for fairness anymore. She's like, I'm, I'm need to be, I need to be my own, you know, I cannot rely on someone else and so she's she also she's always had this fear of relying on someone else as well and receiving right so I could go on and on with stories mine and my mother's but the point is or the point that I'm trying to make is that we ultimately all carry the mother wound regardless of the situation and the environment we grew up in. I have a friend, for example, uh, who has a very toxic mother with narcissistic patterns and the kind of mother who very easily criticizes everything or always has an opinion on the ways you do things. For years, she has tried to stay away from her until she realized that she she started recreating the same behaviors in her life so there are situations also where the mother was um completely absent or out of the picture so just like my grandmother and maybe you experienced um an abusive mother or one who struggles with depression and mental disorders there are many many different kinds and types of wounds and patterns obviously and so as i always say there's no need to overanalyze your mother but i would suggest you to try to understand her inner child and her story because that can enable sincere compassion and non-attachment 
and a reminder that non-attachment is pure unconditional love. And I know it's not easy to forgive and I'm not asking you to for to forgive right now, right away. But maybe to start a forgiving process, knowing that, you know, it's her first time on earth. I'm talking about your mother. If, you know, this is something you're, you really want to dive into. It was her first time on earth. She, you know, made decisions based on her environment, based on what she knew, what she knows. Um, if your parents are now old or if your mom is old now, um, there's no need to try and change her. There's no need to try and change anyone, to be honest. But um, try to really cultivate this compassion and understanding of um, where this come from and I'm not saying that if you had a abusive and abusive mother and you know there are very unforgiving um, toxic behaviors um, it's it's complex right but there is there's also your own inner child you need to forgive but Everything is, is linked. Everything is connected. So as you forgive your grandmother is in your child, you can forgive your inner child. And if you forgive your mother is in your child, you can forgive your inner child. And if you forgive your inner child, you can forgive her inner child and their inner child. <laughs> like, um, you can really start this cycle this forgiveness cycle um but also forgiveness i guess is another topic it's not so much of the it's not so much the topic of this episode right now but um i really just wanted to talk about the mother wound and what it is and maybe you can recognize yourself in this or you can recognize some patterns um that can make you understand yourself a bit more also and take this healing path with more gentleness and more tenderness so i would suggest because i like to come up with solutions um (laughs) i would suggest you to write a letter to your mother visualizing her as a child so you would write a letter to her in your child, um, basically. And it could help unravel certain things with compassion. And if, however, you are angry, I'd invite you to write an angry letter. And you don't have to send it ever. <laughs> but try to write it with no filter. But always cultivating the understanding we just dove into. So that is it for today's episode. I thank you so much for listening. And feel free to let me know what your thoughts or if you have any questions in regards to the mother wounds. You can always message me on Instagram. And for those I will see in the workshops, then I cannot wait again to hug you and to talk to you and to meet you i send you so 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 much love i hope you have a beautiful day or evening and we'll talk soon